Hello. Wow. Gib salad, it's mine. I've barely eaten anything today. I cannot hand over my salad. For I wish to consume it myself. At a very slow pace. Hello chat, how is everyone doing? Hello, hello. <laughs> Solid ASMR. Maybe. I have a piece of bread also to consume. You're doing pretty alright? Cool. Please, ma'am, just a single tomato seed. But a single. A single tomat. Sleepy wolf. Today I'm wolf of sleep. I've been very exhausted all day. Very, very tired. Violently low energy. Hello, Kuma. Welcome. Hello, Levels. Wolf of Sleep and Salad, yeah. My... My will to eat has been very... low. I've, I basically had no appetite. For... Half the day, so I'm eating now. I don't really have much of an appetite now either, but I don't want to go to bed without eating, so here we are. I talked to my therapist about switching my meds today, so that's pretty pog. I hope everything goes well for you. Switching meds is... Not fun. Go to bed without eating, didn't you just sleep? No. I woke up at, um... I woke up very early this morning to get my new medication. And I have been up since. And I'm very tired. <laughs> I think it's the heat or the meds. It's probably the meds. Um... I don't- <laughs> I don't want to get too specific, I don't want to say what they're for. Um... Oh shoot. Out of privacy reasons, but... Swapping over just makes your body go a little wonky. I've had no other side effects though, so... That's good. Actually, welcome. Hello. <laughs> we all know those are vitamin gummy bears. I should probably take vitamin gummy bears. Lord knows I need more vitamins in any way I can get them.
Oh, shoot. Good that there's no side effects, yeah. I mean, the worst side effect is just that I'm very drowsy, but that's it. I had a bit of nausea earlier today, which is why I didn't eat. Um. But not much besides that. Cold. Cold a sip. Welcome, welcome to the kawaii. As far as side effects go, drowsiness is not too bad, that's true. I mean, it depends on what you're taking, obviously, but... In my case, drowsiness is something <laughs> very easy to get away with. I had a very stupid idea today, by the way. I... <laughs> I was really stupid. But, uh... When I already started getting drowsy, I decided to shower. And, you know, while I was in the shower, I decided to shave my legs, as one does sometimes in the summer. And <laughs> I, I nicked my knee, like, twice. Good now, though. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. I just kind of looked at myself and went, Oh, god damn it! Oh, god damn it. I used to have lots of marks around my legs from nicking during shaving. It's eventually I just opted for more. Oh, the thing is, I I would be down to try like laser hair removal, but I've heard that that hurts like a motherfucker, which is why I don't want to do it. I mean, my pain threshold my pain threshold is fairly high, but I'm also if I know that something's gonna hurt, I don't want to do it. And I mean, I don't mind just shaving my legs, so. Nothing can go wrong with a razor when you're drowsy, right? Exactly. Scaredy wolf, yeah. Well, the thing is also, I don't want to pay for the appointment and then chicken out. Like, you know, two minutes in. That would just be a waste of money. I know you can get like hair removal cream, but I don't believe in those. <laughs> I've never tried it, but it just seems like too easy. I feel like it either damages your skin or just like doesn't work. But I don't know, I've never tried. Pain threshold is high, but pain is still pain. Very true. Pain is still pain. That's part of the reason why I've, um... Uh, well, no. It's like... 30% of... The reason why I have... Well, a, a major part is that I don't know what I would get. Um... But one of the major parts of... Like, why I have not gotten a tattoo is because I'm too scared, because I think it's gonna hurt too much.
Does anyone in chat have any cool tattoos they want to share? Either tattoos that you have or ones that you're planning on getting, but you just can't get now for some reason. What would you get? I don't know. That's the thing. I don't have like a anything that I feel so strongly about that I want it to be etched into my fucking skin, you know? Tattoos are cool though. I'm the only one in my, um, in like my immediate family who doesn't have a tattoo. My brother, Big Bro, Big Bro Wolf, he has, um, he has his right, no, wait, he has his forearm covered on one hand and like a full sleeve on the other. And I'm, meanwhile, I'm sitting here like, Wolf bro, he went, he went in hard. He got his entire forearm tatted and a sleeve on the other arm. If I was less of a coward, I would get a Kiryu tattoo. Well, the thing about like Yakuza tattoos, like back tattoos, like Irizumi's is that they're done in a specific way, which is different from like normal tattoos. Not that you can't replicate it. Um. But yeah. They have like a significance to them. Which I feel like it's a little weird to get them. <coughs> I was cold sweating when I got mine. That's understandable. I would probably also. I know in a lot of cases, when people are worried about getting a tattoo, you can come in for like a little consultation and you can kind of try to see what the needle feels like. To be like, yo, can I handle this or not? I know some shops offer that. <laughs> I have the vile blood rune on my left arm. That is something I would consider getting actually, now that you mention it. I would consider getting a bloodborne rune actually. Let me DM you a tattoo I kind of want, but I'm too afraid to get because my pain tolerance is babu. Let me open up ye old discord. Oh, that's pretty. That's super pretty. That's beautiful. As far as I know, the spine part of the back hurts like hell. Where anywhere where the skin is like thinner and where there's bones closer to the skin hurts way more than like fatty parts. <laughs> I got my family coat of arms on my left arm, my submarine warfare pin on my left pectoral, and then a really big one with two paintings from the Battle of B B Balakava going from my right pectoral over my shoulder into my shoulder blade with the sec- what the f- hold on, Adamus, you're fucking- you're tatted the fuck up! What the fuck? That's crazy. Damn, that's cool- that's- that's raw as hell! <laughs> I saw an athlete who has a like kanji tattoo on his chest Wait, oh, it was Kuxil's family. That's the thing. A lot of people, I mean, a lot of people get, I have a story about that. A lot of people get a phrase tattooed in like Latin or any language that they don't speak. And they just get it off of like a quote most of the time. So they don't check with a native speaker or anything like that to make sure that it's correct. They just find like a quote on Google. And then be like, this is cool. It's like, it's the same energy when people just take random kanji and tattoo them. And they're like, yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> this holds a lot of significance to me. Very cool. <laughs> you know, it just doesn't. Very strange. Um, but I had a girl who I went to school with who 
I mean, at the end of the day, is it's their body, and you know, you can get what whatever the fuck you want tattooed. You can get, you know, you can get Peppa Pig tattooed on your body if you want to. Like, it's it's. Do what you want. Do what you want. It's your body. You're an adult. You can do it. Prince, thank you so much for the 14 months. Like, do whatever you want. Get whatever tattoo you want. But I had a girl who I went to school with. I think we were seniors. Were we seniors? I think so. Well, we must have been 18 at least, I think. Um, She got a... Um, she got a Greek phrase tattooed on her, uh, on her ribcage. It was some phrase in Greek that she got, um, tattooed on her ribcage. And not too long after she got that tattoo, one of her teachers actually, um, was from Greece. And saw the tattoo, and they were like... They- I mean, they couldn't keep quiet. They were like, um... That's misspelled. Like... Oof. Oof. Zermena, thank you so much for the bits. Welcome. The teacher probably shouldn't have said anything. I think they just felt too bad. And I also kind of think they just spoke without thinking. I don't know, I'm not sure. They were just kind of like, um, that's not spelt right. I had that happen, and then I also had a, um, well this one is like more, this, this one's easier to take care of, but I had, uh, I had another person who I went to school with. They got a septum piercing, which is, you know, when you get, like, the, the, the one in your nose, so that you look like a bull. They got a septum piercing, and then came to school with it, and, like, they got it during the weekend, came to school on Monday, and was like, yeah, I don't like it, I'm taking it out. Which, when you get a, a piercing... Like, as long, as long as you're in the early stages, like the first couple of days after getting it, it's very easy to just take the piercing out and let the hole grow back. Like, the, the longer you have a... The longer you keep a piercing in, the harder it's going to be for the hole to grow back together. The sooner you change your mind about a piercing and take it out, the quicker the hole is going to close. So, I mean, they changed their mind very quickly and just took it out and, yeah. You know? Piercings scare me. I used to have a lot of piercings in my ears, but I took them out. After one of them got ripped out, I took all of them out. I used to have, hold on, let me feel. One, hold on. One... Well, I still have my- that's not true. I still have two holes. The ones closest to the earlobe. One, two, three, four. I used to have four on my left ear and, um, let me feel. One... I had one down on the earlobe and then one on, like, the above, like, the hard part of your ear? I don't know what it's called. Like, through there. So two on my right ear and four on my left ear I used to have. But I took all of them out except for the ones that are closest to my m my face, I guess. I'm making it seem like I was like really pierced up, like I was some I was some Yankee. <laughs> my my wild teenage days where I had ten piercings. I was very close to getting my um. What are they called? Snake bites? Is that what they're called? Yeah, the ones on your lip, yeah. I wanted to get snake bites uh, when I was a teenager as well, but I didn't. 
I was very close to doing that. Very, very close. Well, first I wanted first I wanted angel bites, which are the ones that you get on your upper lip. I remember when I was like 15, I wanted angel bites, uh, but my mom said no. <laughs> and then I wanted snake bites, but my mom said no once more. And then I just kind of gave up eventually down the line. I do like- I really still like uh, how piercings look. I wouldn't personally get them on myself anymore. Uh, I don't think out of like the trauma of one of them ripping out. But I do- I find piercings incredibly attractive on people. If I meet someone, if I meet a, a- if I meet a person who I find to be like relatively attractive, they're like a- they're like a solid seven on the attractiveness scale. If they have a piercing, they're just gonna like- they're just gonna shoot up to ten. Who oh boy. <laughs> Horny for piercings, yes. Very much. Freya, hi Freya, welcome. I had snake. Wait, you did? <gasps> oh my god. The piercings stay on during sex, please. I'm not a big fan of um, ones that are inside of your mouth. Like, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of tongue piercings or uh, stuff like that. But that's just that's just because of hygiene reasons. Cause I'm a I am a hygiene freak. Um I just like I think they look cool. In theory, I think tongue piercings look very, very cool. They look super cool. They can look very, 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 very attractive. But all I can think of is like Mouths are already so filled with bacteria and they're so gross. And you just have a tongue piercing in there all the time, like... Ugh. Ugh. Gives me the... Gives me the heebie-jeebies. Nose piercing looks nice. Uh, I agree. Yes. BRB getting a Jacob's Ladder? I don't know what that is. That's scary. Don't Google. Oh, that makes me want to do it, though. You probably don't want to? Well, you can't say that, because now I really want to. What is it? Is it, is it gross? Is it tongue-related? Is it related to your... to your tongue? <laughs> that was not We know what that is. You learn something new every day. That's gotta be painful. I didn't know that. I didn't. I didn't know that dick piercings had specific names. I don't want to look it up. Please explain. It's like a row of. <laughs> it's like a row of piercings, like up the dick. Mature stream, by the way. <laughs> I did not think that was gonna be dick related. Yabe. Kanari yabe. It's bars from the scrot up to the shaft. Do not say the scrot.
<laughs> oh. <coughs> I just flashbanged myself. Well, now I know what that... Um, now I know what that is. So... I've... I've gained... I've gained insight. There are people who have insanely high pain tolerance. I would say... I... I did claim earlier to have a high pain tolerance. I don't think my pain tolerance is that high. <laughs> I don't think I could... I don't think I could get a tattoo like that. <laughs> oh. <coughs> I also would not really enjoy that because of, again, hygiene issues. Ah. <sighs> hygiene. Hygiene is the magic word. I am a hygiene freak. I feel a little bad about it even. I am a... I am a big hygiene freak. <laughs> Blinded, thank you for the five. I'm already on my third dump of the day. How is that possible? Are you okay? How can you... How can you go three times a day? That's... that's impressive. Well, to be fair, my stomach is just very slow and, um, I barely go once a day, so... Is it uncommon? I am the last person who anyone should be basing, like, what a healthy stomach is upon. I barely eat. All I eat is, like, lettuce and unhealthy shit. I eat candy and lettuce and that's it. And all I drink is cranberry juice and boba. And I- and I poop, like, twice a week. <laughs> Are you sure you're not a rabbit? That's about it. That's about it. What the fuck is this diet? It is, ah. God has allowed me to live another day. I guess I have to run around and scurry around on the floor to try to find any food to put inside of me. <laughs> Just twice a week. I don't know the specifics. I don't have a calendar next to my toilet. <laughs> but I don't go every day. <laughs> Why do you want to know about my poop habits anywhere? Grass-based diet. Honey, it's July 28th. Time to poop. This bread is really good. Homework for chat, make a poop log. Report due next week. Not to me. Not to me, I hope. I don't want to see your poop log. You can repeat it to each other. I don't want to see it. This thing got cursed? It's always cursed. Is it Tuesday already? It sure is. It's crazy. Coffee will make you go poop. That's the problem. I don't drink coffee. I don't like coffee. I know um, eating aloe vera makes you poop. Because it's like basically a laxative. Or well, the, the like sticky part is. Aww, I miss you during my vacation. That's so cute, Freya. That's so cute. You are so sweet. When are we collabing? That's the real question. 
Who's out there munching on aloe vera? No one, I don't think. But the actual sticky part is um, the laxative. You can eat the skin um, and the 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 like jelly part inside, but the the stuff that's in between is the actual stuff that's bad for you. The little sticky stuff. Lina, thank you so much for the five again. I never know what to say, but thank you for all the amazing content that you provided us with. Thank you so much. That's so sweet. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. I really appreciate it. That's incredibly generous. Thank you so much. The jelly part does look tasty. Well, okay. If you look at like a... If you look at an aloe vera plant... It's made up of like three parts, basically. There's the actual outside, um, like the hard stuff on it. Which I know some people actually use for like salads. Um, it's not tasty. No, 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 no. It can be tasty. It's if you eat it with the... If you eat the plant straight away and you eat the jelly part when it still has the stickiness on it, that is when it gets really, really bitter. It's the sticky stuff in between the layer of the, the skin and the jelly. There's a sticky layer in between there and that's what makes it really, really bitter. But if you wash off the jelly, um, it's not bitter at all. You still should not eat it in like large quantities because um, it'll just make you shit yourself. <laughs> but bitter description very lightly. Yeah, if you wash off the jelly properly and get rid of the slimy stuff, then um, that goes away. It's still like a bit of an acquired taste, I guess. I really like aloe vera drinks though. They're like my favorite, I love them. It tastes like I'm drinking hand sanitizer, but like in a good way. I love the aloe drink when I have mouth sores from pain to comfy for a little while. That sounds very nice. Also, hi, Eric. Welcome. First I heard was elevator drinks and I was very confused. I'm sorry, I'm speaking with my mouth full. Because I'm eating bread. So you tried hand sanitizer? No, but you can like imagine. I don't know. You know how it's we just have like inside of us built in, built inside our brains. You can look at an object and be like, I bet what it feels like to chew on that. You know what I mean? <laughs> that was the most dog sentence I've ever said. <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine what hand sanitizer tastes like based on how it smells and feels. Yeah. I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. Really? Like, if you look at something, if I look at this piece of bread that I'm holding in my hand right now, I can imagine what the sensation of chewing on this piece of bread is in my head without chewing on the piece of bread. I know what it feels like to chew on this piece of bread. I don't know, man. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. You know? I know what the sensation of, like, without me biting down on my spoon, I know what it's gonna feel like if I bite down on my spoon. You know? I can just look at it and I know that it's gonna feel like 
Uh, very uncomfortable. I can vividly remember scents if I think about them. I'm like that too. I'm very smell sensitive. Incredibly smell sensitive. I can't be in like a tax free at an airport for too long because everything just smells like perfume and it makes my head hurt. Smell and flavor are related anyway, so things often taste how they smell. That's true. Thank you, Bunny Moon. Thank you for the science. I have a very, very sensitive nose. Lina, thank you for the five. <laughs> I don't want you to have this money. Can you give it to Eric? He deserves it way more. I got you. Um, Go subscribe to Eric on Twitch. Your model Tesla's you're chewing with your mouth open. It's actually not that. It's just picking up the movements of my jaw. Even though I am very much chewing with my mouth closed. I can't stand next to a nail salon. I start dying. I'm like that too. Thank you, Kuma, for the shout out. Is that Wolf's brother? Yeah, it's my baby brother. Go subscribe to him on Twitch.tv. Not just because he's my little brother, but because he's very cute. I aspire to be half as quick as Kuma is doing literally anything. Me too. I'm slow, what do you mean? I wish I could talk about what you did. Yesterday. Off stream. To me, personally. <laughs> Never mind, I remember, yeah, yeah. You do? Mm-hmm. Do you know? <laughs> you stinky little bear. <laughs> Spell them beans? I cannot. I cannot do so. Well, I mean, I technically can. But I also don't want to. Oh, I gotta stretch. <sighs> it was supposed to rain today, and there has been not a single drop. I am very upset. Humid? Yeah, it is humid. There was a rainstorm here, lucky you. I want rain, though. We haven't had rain in forever. It's- it's just humid. Rain is boggers, it's true. I like it when it rains. I had a really 
<laughs> Do I want to tell this story? I might not want to tell this story now that I think about it. I I don't know if I do want to tell the story. You brought it up, I did. Okay. So this one time, uh, I was waiting at... Where was it? Oh, I was going home from... Okay, so my friend lived... Uh, when I was younger, I had a friend who lived close to uh, someone that I had a crush on. And I was going home from my friend's house, and I was gonna take the bus. And I think I was like 14? I think I was like 14, around there. 13, 14. Um, I had my little umbrella, and it was raining. It was raining really hard. It had been raining all day, so there were huge puddles right on the side of the road where the bus stop was. And... No one was at the bus stop. So I... <laughs> I started... <laughs> I started jumping around in the puddles. <laughs> I... I started jumping around in the puddles. Like a... Like a small child would. Um... That's cute. No! For me, it wasn't. For me, it was terribly embarrassing. Because not only did the guy that I like walk by, because he was walking his dog, but he also walked by with his friend. <laughs> and neither one of them acknowledged me. Uh. <laughs> uh. I don't think I ever talked to him after that. Luckily he was- we- we were, um, we were the same age, but he was in another school, so. My friend was in my school still, but he was in another school, so. I got off safe off of that. <laughs> Pay her no mind, it's just the local puddle girl. Somehow it's always a crush. Because I always do embarrassing stuff around... Well, the thing is, I do a lot of embarrassing stuff, but the most embarrassing memories that I have is usually related to a crush. I also just had a lot of crushes, so... There's that too. I cannot relate to the people that- Like, I'm not saying I- I haven't dated a lot of people or tried to, like, pursue a relationship with a lot of people but I've had a lot of crushes <laughs> throughout my- throughout my life. Well, I would say uh, up until the point where I was, like, 20 and then it just died. <laughs> Since then, it's like, nope. Nope. You used up all of your love energy before turning 20. And now they're- <laughs> now you've lost them. <laughs> we do be having feelings sometimes, that's true. Love energy at 0%. Crushed out, yeah. I just used to do a lot of embarrassing shit also, which is why I have a bunch of... I don't have, like, exclusively embarrassing stories related to crushes. I just remember them the most vividly. I used to do a bunch of embarrassing shit, though. I was very tuny as a teen. I used to do a lot of embarrassing shit. I've talked about it on stream before, but I used to wear bandages um, on my arms. And when people would ask me about it, like if I sprained my my wrist or something, I'd be like, ha, don't worry about me. Like I would have my, um, I would have, I would, this is 100% true. I would walk into school 
I would make sure I was wearing like a hoodie and I would walk into school with the arms like curled up all the way up so that you could clearly see the bandages that I would wear. And then I waited for someone to be like, "Oh, what happened? What 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 did you do? What's what's you know, what's wrong? Did you did you hurt your arm or something?" And I'd be like, "Ha! Don't worry about me." <laughs> And then, like, pull my shirt down. It's no big deal. <laughs> like, <laughs> I used to be very, very tuny as a teen. I would also wear, um, well, not to school, but in private, I would wear different colored uh, contact lenses so that it looked like I had heterochromia. <laughs> <laughs> was there like an actual reason for you to be wearing the bandages well sort of so well it's not a cool reason um i've fractured my arm several times and the last time i fractured my arm the bone like grew back in a really weird way so now every now and then my wrist gets stuck in like a weird position and I sometimes I bandage it just to uh just for support. Just to make sure that it felt more supported. But it's not like an interesting or cool reason. <laughs> Didn't you also walk past your church and be like, ah, oh, my power? <laughs> see us. See us. Why do you remember that? Why do you remember that? Why do you remember that? God, thank you for the bits. Why do you remember that? When I would walk to my bus, I used to take the long way around. Just so I could... I don't want to have this conversation anymore. I don't want to have this conversation anymore. I want out. I want out. I want out. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I don't want to remember this. How dare you make me remember this? How dare you? Have you also worn a Naruto headband to school? I have not. I've never worn any cosplay uh, or anything like that to school. I wasn't super into anime as a teen. I was more into games as a teen. I was... um. I was... I gotta think. I would say I was really into anime more so when I was... I was very into manga and anime when I was like around... I would say between like 10 and 14. Which I mean technically is like beginning of your teen years, but... From like there and upwards. I kind of dropped off of a lot of manga and anime in middle school. And then I was just very into games since then. Tween years, yeah. At least you didn't pretend to be Sephiroth in your mid-twenties in front of your neighbors with a crowbar. Yeah. Who would do that, right? Who would do that? Who would do such a stupid thing? Oddly specific, yeah. Strange. I still- I can't pick up, like, an umbrella without doing poses with it. I can't. I have to do it.
<laughs> the power of God and anime is on your side, yeah. Truly. I do have a story that's a bit more wholesome. Um, so I've been a very big fan of Macross for a very long time. Ever since I was, uh, ever since I was young, I've been a big friend of Macross. <coughs> and I would listen to a lot of, like, Lin, like, a lot of Minmei songs in my bedroom. And I would, <laughs> I had this little, I, I don't know how to explain it. It's like a little, a tiny little pot of glitter. And I would pretend like I was performing in my bedroom and I would grab pieces of glitter and like throw them in the air so that they would sparkle and then I would pretend like I was performing <laughs> that's slightly worse <laughs> Adam has holy shit thank you for the bits thank you for your tuny therapy thank you <laughs> thank you very cute, thank you. That must have made a mess, it sure did. I had to sweep it all up before my mom noticed. I would just sweep it up and then put it like back in the pot, basically, so I could do it again. <laughs> Cause that was my big move, like in the chorus. I would grab like some glitter in my hand and I would do like a dance move and I would pretend that I was singing with a microphone and then I would do this move where I like shoo, and I threw the glitter and I would dance in the chorus, oh, whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Hello Creed, welcome. Is it your ultimate move? Absolutely. Small Woof just wanted to be, just wanted to be an idol. I remember we used to do, we had this little thing where we would basically like, this was in elementary school, we would just play, we would act like we were on well, American Idol, but like over here we just call it Idol, not American Idol, because we're not American. <laughs> so it's just called Idol over here. So we would pretend that we were basically like playing a game of Idol, American Idol, Idol. Um, and some kids that didn't want to sing would pretend to be the judges. And then other people, or other kids rather, would line up to sing. Uh, and whenever I- I was very, very shy as a kid, so I always tried to get on the jury. Imagine not being American, right? I always tried to get a jury seat, like a judge seat. Cause I didn't want to- I didn't want to sing, cause I was very shy. Um... Did you want to be si I basically wanted to be the Simon Cowell, yes, of the playground. I wanted to be the Simon Cowell of the playground, but I was never allowed to. I wanted to be- well, I either didn't want to participate at all, but if the group that I was playing it with just decided that they were gonna do it, then I tried to get a- a- a, a judge spot. But I would always- be pulled into the singing line. <laughs> I would always be pulled into the singing line. <laughs> and I would always be made to go last. <laughs> I... I had to... I got pulled into the singing line. I was made to go last every single time. And I didn't ever get to choose what I wanted to sing myself. <laughs> Ha 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 ha! 
it was just kind of my turn eventually, and I was like, I don't really want to do this. I don't, I don't want to. I don't, I don't want to. But that's where we are. You sure they weren't just bullying you? I have a lot of, um, I have a lot of experiences from, uh, my young days. Where you could ask that question, and in hindsight, I could go... Oh. You know what? Maybe. <laughs> I wasn't... I was very, very shy and very unsociable as a kid, uh, so... When I was invited to play with someone, I, I didn't really have the option to say no. Because I didn't have a lot of friends that I could just go to. It wasn't like I could pick and choose. <laughs> if I got invited, I was happy. <laughs> now you're a shy and awkward adult? I'm not particularly shy anymore. I'm just very um, conservative with my time. What? That made no sense. I- I'm very, um... I don't know. I'm- I'm kind of... I, it, it sounds rude when you say it out loud, but I'm- I'm- I'm pretty picky. I'm just picky about who I hang out with. Are you just reserved? I would say so. A lot of the times, um, when I'm hanging out with someone, I... Well, sometimes I'm very loud and I'm very active in the conversation if it's something that I'm very interested in. But a lot of the times, I can just sit and be very quiet for a long time. And because when I do that, I tend to be, like, extremely quiet. If it's someone who doesn't know me very well, they... I've had times where they've interpreted that as me being, like, indifferent. Or that I'm not actually enjoying myself. Um... Because I'm not the type of person who voices... My... I don't know, I don't voice affection a lot. I guess. I don't really voice my feelings a lot. Or stuff like that. So a lot of the times... I've had people ask, like, oh, are you, are you bored? Like, you can, you, you can leave if you want to. And, you know, I'm sitting there like, no, I'm having a great time. I'm just not talking. <laughs> it depends a lot on my dynamic with, um, the person that I'm hanging out with. But unfortunately, me not speaking a lot often comes off as indifference. That hurt, but what hurts more, what hurts the most, is getting told by people that they were afraid to approach you, or like intimidated by you, that shit hurts. That shit makes me so sad. <laughs> it makes me very sad. That shit is the- that shit's the real stuff that hurts. <laughs> would think that. <laughs> well, to be fair, you warmed up to me very quickly, Creed. Which is how we're still friends. I did, I just have to meme it. That's fair. We've known each other for so long now. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. Friendships? Friendships that span over multiple years? I don't think you realize how rare friendships that span over multiple years are. Like, I mean, I mean, friendships in in the sense of like someone you actively talk to. I don't think you realize how rare those are unless you're like un until you're an adult or like out of school. <laughs> I 
Because, I mean, I have a lot of people that I, I, I would just consider myself, like, an acquaintance to. You know? That I can talk to every now and then. But, like, genuine friends that I keep up with and I hang out with actively is, like, they're so rare. Especially if there's someone who you met, you know, as an adult. Strange. <coughs> Excuse me. I've moved so much for school or work, I don't have many close friends anymore. All of my closest friends that I have right now are... Like, long-distance relationships, long-distance friendships. <laughs> Realizing that you're only friends with someone because you see them every day in school is a heck of a thing. Yeah. That is how school works. Doesn't help that I suck at initiating conversations. I'm like that too. I'm really bad at initiating conversations. Very, very bad at it. I used to have a friend I always talked to, but now he's married with kids and has no interest to talk to me much anymore. I think he's just busy with having children. <laughs> That does make you very, very busy. <laughs> Raising a child is a lot of work. It's weird, I see my co-workers every weekdays, but I'm not friends with them. Well, I think you, you form relationships differently when you're in school and when you're in... You know, when you're at work. Because, I mean, when you're in school... You, you play and stuff during recess and shit like that, and you hang out way more when you're in school than when you're an adult. When you're an adult, you just go to work to- like, you don't go to work to make friends. But a lot of the times, you go to school to see your friends and not specifically to study. But you don't go to work to see your friends, unless you have very close friends at work, I guess. A lot of the times, you just go to work to get your money and then go home. <laughs> The dynamic of responsibility is also different, that's also true. School is an opportunity for you to develop and socialize while work is just work, that's true. I don't think I've made any friends at the previous jobs that I had. Hard to make friends with Tim from accounting when he won't finish his damn reports on time. <laughs> it also depends on if you enjoy your work or not. If you enjoy your work, the more likely to make friends as well as said workplace. That's also true. I mean, the more cheerful you are towards other people, the more likely you are to make friends. Long-lasting friendships that start out very kind, evolve into roasting each other out of love. I'm not huge on... Stuff like that. I don't know. For me, it definitely- I would not feel comfortable doing that to anyone just based off of like how long we've been friends. It's more just specifically the dynamic that I have with that person. <laughs> a mood? A mood. For example, Kuma. Me and Kuma do, like, basically no mutual roasting towards one another. 
It's like it's, when it happens, like it's rare when it happens, but when it happens, it's always like very harmless. It's very, very base, simple things, and it's very, very harmless. We don't go in on each other like really hard because I mean, that's not our dynamic. And that doesn't mean that we're not close to each other. It just means we don't treat each other like that. It depends on your dynamic with that person, I think, more so than the amount of time that you've known someone. Because, I mean, I've known Kuma for uh, years at this point, but I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna walk up to her tomorrow and be like, Yo, what's up, you stinky, ugly bear? You eat any honey lately? Ha ha ha, and then knock her over. <laughs> I will ignore you. Probably. <laughs> Probably. You gross animal, yeah. You beast. I think it's also- it also just has to do with the fact that Kuma is like... such a- such a divine and pure existence. She's like Buddha. There's nothing you can roast about Kuma. I have no ammunition in terms of like roasting Kuma. While she has tons of it on me. So if like listen, the only reason I don't roast Kuma is because she has way more she could she could deal way greater damage to me. And I'm staying the fuck in my lane. <laughs> I do way more stupid and embarrassing shit than she does. Which is why I'm staying in my lane. I will never roast you, thank you. You will never put me on the Monster Hunter barbecue spit and roast me. Who has ammo? She does. Truly, she does. I will for Kuma. I'll get you back. You can be with me. Are you saying we should just roast on the spit together? Why would we do that when we can both simply not roast ourselves on the spit? Why would you <laughs> Why would we roast each other <laughs> together? <laughs> Oh, roast a thing together. Okay, yeah, we can do that. We should do that, yes. <laughs> Group spit roasting begins at five. Don't ever say that. <laughs> Awful. Absolutely awful. Life is not but a never-ending rotation on the barbecue spit. Ooh, excuse me. Ooh, I feel myself. Falling asleep. Ugh. Oh god. A 
sleeping stream. I am gonna go to bed in a bit. Because I am very tired. Become horizontal wolf. I will. I will become the horizontal wolf. Ugh. I did eat my dinner, so... I successfully completed eating my dinner. So now I do think I deserve to go eat. <laughs> Hydrate. I'll have a sip before I go. Wolf of Sleep, what is your wisdom? Um... Invest in a, uh, a pillow mist and spray it on your pillow and you will fall asleep faster. Mm. It works for me, I have a lavender one. Sip, sip, sip. Oh shoot. I guess pillow mist. I don't know if it's called pillow mist. It might just be like room mist. I don't know what it's called. It's like scented. It's not perfume, but it's like scented. A little mist that you spray on your sheets. I have one that smells like lavender. Ugh. Like a humidifier? No, it's like you actually spray it. <laughs> Febreze. No, it's not Febreze. It's specifically to like make um, sheets and stuff small. Very nice. I just like going to bed and smelling my lavender pillow. Yawning is contagious, yeah, it's true. I'm gonna end off. Um, but thank you guys for keeping me company while I ate my dinner. And thank you for- hold on. Thank you for keeping me company while I had my dinner. And also, thank you for teaching me about dick piercings. I'm sorry that- <laughs> Wait, what? That happened before you came in. <laughs> um, I'm happy we could study that together. Take care, chat. Please hydrate and take care of your dicks. Don't get piercings on your dick unless you'd like to. If you get a piercing, make sure you are taking care of it and you are- Respecting your body and practicing careful hygiene. Um, I'm sorry that stream today was short. And I am very, very sleepy. But hopefully we can catch up on that later this week. Um, I don't know what we'll play. Probably Hades. If I feel like my... Um, if I feel like my brain can keep up and stay awake, then we'll we'll play Hades. I don't know. We'll see what we end up doing. Um, but yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Thank you guys so much for hanging out today. Uh -huh. Okay. Thank you for keeping me company while I have my dinner. Take care. Have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday, is what today is. Have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday, as well as a great start to your Wednesday. We will see each other again on Thursday. And then again on Saturday as well. Take care. Have a good night. You too, Julia. Thank you. See you later. Peace out. I will see you guys very soon, later this week. Take care. Stay safe. And I'll see you soon.
Good night. Bye bye. Good night.